Hi, Booktube. This is Johnny. It is August the 24th, 2017. It is 8.57 at night here in West Michigan. And I'm still being a bachelor. My wife is gone until Monday. Monday night should be back, next Monday night. So yeah, so I'm just hanging out here. Thought I would talk to somebody besides myself, listening to my voice inside my inner self, listening to some death metal, messing with the computer, uh, watching videos, looking for books. The reason why I was down the lower level looking for books is that today I finally got around to getting some sunflower seeds for our birds, our bird feeder. Uh, for those who know, I like sitting, standing by the kitchen window watching the birds by the bird feeder. It's, it's kind of like, it's kind of interesting. I, I never looked at birds were up until I got married. That's one thing that really struck me when I met my wife going on 39 years ago, that when I visited Carol's parents here in Holland, Michigan, when they were living, both Carol's parents have passed away, that I was really struck by the fact that they fed birds. They had a bird feeder in their backyard and they always fed birds and um, they had a bird feeder by their back they had like a a back porch that was all built in you could sit back there and and they would watch birds by the bird feeder and I, you know i never i never watched birds were aware of birds and um, so one thing when i met my wife 38 years ago she was always talking about birds and flowers and the weather and the sunshine and and I never heard anybody talk about nature or talk about birds or talk about flowers or going to the lake and walking in parks. I, I never did any of that. Now, I did live outside in the woods. I was aware of, of living in the woods. I mean, I lived out in the woods, but I was so much up into my head that I wasn't really aware of my physical surroundings. I was always up in my head when I was out in nature. I was always tripping or, or just too absorbed into myself to see the world around me. Now, I loved going to the ocean when I was in California. I loved camping by the ocean there, Pacific Ocean. I loved going to the mountains and camping and I liked, but it was a totally different kind of thing. So anyway, uh, so today I did go get bird seed. Uh, I called my friend up this morning before I went, my friend Tim, and said, Tim, you want to go with me to Zealand to get bird seed? And, We'll stop at thrift stores, and he likes looking at stuff at thrift stores. And he said, sure. So I picked Tim up at 10 o'clock, and we went to Zealand, which, like I said, is not far. This time, instead of getting one sack of sunflower seeds, I got two 50-pound packs, uh, bags of sunflower seeds. Because these uh, birds have just been eating nonstop. It's always kind of strange because the birds will eat and they'll eat and every day they're out there and then you look outside and there's only a few birds left. They all start migrating. So I picked him at 10 o'clock. We went to Zealand. We got bird seed and then Zealand is a thrift store. And as we're in, so I stopped and I found these three books at that thrift store. Uh, it was a, it's a, the thrift store is really, it sells 
merchant, uh, they sell crafts from Guatemala to raise money for uh, mission work in Guatemala. And it's a, it's a mission kind of thing. So I picked up this book at this Guatemala thrift store who sells crafts and they sell furniture and knickknacks and glassware and odds and ends and clothes and all kinds of stuff but they sell used books and I picked this one up. This is by William Lease Heat Moon Here, There and Elsewhere Stories from the Road. Uh, for those who know, for many years I uh, one of the first books I bought by William Lee's Half Moon is Blue Highways, A Journey into America. He writes uh, travel memoirs. Uh, he writes about America. He wrote this book, uh, Prairie Earth, by William Lee's Heath, Heath Moon. Uh, Prairie Earth is a vigorous and exalted invocation of the American land, its people, its past, its hopes, the wor the very word prairie land, an old geo jet geo directed geo like geologic term for the soils of our central gra grasslands captures captures the essence of the American tall grass and so it goes into there. It just so the point is, I went down to the lower level, and I got these out of the lower level. We also have River Horse, A Voyage Across America. So I got these out of the lower level. I've had them for years. But, oh, and he also wrote this one. This is by William Lee's Half Moon, Roads to Quiz and American Mosey. This is his account is of uh, visiting small towns throughout America. So yeah. So now I got for our collection of William Lee's Heat Moon these. So I can put them all together. That's why I was down the lower level looking for them earlier. And I also found that this this thrift store in Zealand this book Dreamland, uh, True Tale of America's Opiate Epidemic. That's one thing you hear about in the news all the time is the opiate epidemic in America from west, west coast to east coast, especially in Central America, uh, well, Central States of America. This one looks at a town in Ohio Ports, Portsmouth, Ohio, and how the drug, the opiate epidemic affected this town. So I got that. And I found this book at this place, Poet's Book of Psalms, the complete Psalter as rendered by 25 poets from the 16th to the 20th centuries, also includes the all 150 Psalms in the King James Version, compiled, edited, introduction by Lawrence Weird Deer. So I got that. <coughs> and I picked up this novel, The Art of Fielding by Chad Harvick. I've looked at this over the last couple of years. This came out in 2011. It's been seen on booktube and it was only, you know, 50 cents. So I got those at that thrift store. And then Tim and I, we went to a Goodwill store on the way heading back to Holland, back to home. No, what, well, no, yeah, we went to a Goodwill and I found these two books. Enthusiasm of Robert Son Davies. For those who watch my booktube know that I really enjoy the writings, essays, uh, novels, anything written by, he's a Canadian writer, he's a playwright, he has taught literature, 
He's he is a into theater, a playwright, written novels. I just got a biography of him just recently at a used book sale. But I found this one I didn't have. This is like an anthology, The Enthusiasms of Robertson Davies, edited by Judith Skelton Grant. I was reading this today, like there's little, little uh, biographical sketch like of, of Edmund Wilson, those who know that I collect the works and writings of Edmund Wilson, one of our great American men of letters. And uh, there's all kinds of things in here. Little articles, essays. He has a, a chapter on Anthony Burgess, who I collect. Uh, he has all kinds of things in here. So I got that. And then I found this book. Uh, this is Consciousness Explained. It's on consciousness, how the... Uh, it says here, Consciousness Explained is a full-scale exploration of human consciousness. Those who know me know that I collect books on consciousness, higher states of consciousness, spiritual consciousness, psychedelic consciousness, nature consciousness, primitive consciousness, uh, people who are just plain don't have any consciousness or just dead, uh, con you know, the living dead, the walking vampires. Consciousness Explained is a full-scale exploration of human consciousness. In this landmark book, Daniel Didinit refutes the traditional common sense theory of consciousness and presents a new model based on a wealth of information from the fields of ne neuroscience, psychology, and artificial intelligence. Our current theories about conscious life of people, animals, even robots are transformed by the new perspective found in this book. So I got this for 50 cents, you know, throw it on the heap. So then after we were thrift stores, my friend wanted to look at, go to Walmart and look at tents. And then after we looked at tents, we went to Staples. I wanted to go to Staples. to get uh, paper for my diary. Today I ended in my August 2017 diary, I ended on page 773. Tomorrow, if I am still here, haven't been raptured, gone to heaven, gone into the new creation to reign with Christ forever, I'll be on page 700 and... 74. So we went to Staples uh, and I got index cards. The reason why I get index cards, I use these for bookmarks. So I got book bookmarks and you know I love these pins. These are Staples rollerball stick pins. I love these pins and I get a whole drawer of these but every time I go to Staples I have to buy more. It's just an obsession I have. And I bought paper. I always get wide rule paper. I, I get staple paper. And since it's back to school sale, I got some more folders for my diaries. I love folders. I love paper. I love pen. Many years ago, before I was married and I lived in California and I was a wandering vagabond, uh, I had a little uh, backpack, and in my backpack I had this this board. I still I've had this since high school. This board, and I always had a pen. I always had paper, and no matter where I was at, uh, wandering Berkeley, walk, wandering the Richmond Hills, hitchhiking over to Stinson Beach and Belimus, or hiking up and down Highway 1, going to, going to Big Sur, or going up north to Mendocino. I always was riding. I would sit by the road, stick my thumb out, hitchhiking, and I was, wherever I was at, I was always riding. 
or I was reading a book. I always had a book with me. Back in those days, I always wrote, I always took big Russian novels with me. Uh, I was really into The Idiot and The Brothers Kuganov and things like that. I, I read a lot of in those days, all kinds of stuff. But I was always writing. I always had a pen, I always had paper, and I would just write whatever was on my brain. I wrote down my life. And as I've mentioned, when I left California to go to Bible college, I burned all my diaries because I must have been just plain, either I was stoned out of my mind or I was just, like I thought I was just burning my bridges, starting completely all over again. But I regret to this day, I burned all those diaries. Because I collected underground newspapers, letters, photographs, all my anti-war. I was a conscious objector in the anti-war movement. I was in the anti-war movement. I had posters, newspapers, stickers. I had tons of stuff. It took me two days to burn it all in my girlfriend's fireplace. And it was the most stupidest thing I've ever done in my life. Because as I've gotten older, your memory begins to fade. And what you, your memory starts playing tricks on you. <laughs> like I was talking to my wife last week and she said, she was mentioning that we, when the kids were growing up, we used to have a dining, uh, a dining room table and a kitchen in the kitchen and we used to eat in the kitchen and I said we ate in the kitchen around a dining room table she said yeah I said I don't remember that I always thought we sat in here here in the dining room and ate no she said we ate in the kitchen and I could not re I cannot remember and I think of all the things that I have forgotten that I could go back if I had those diaries I could read what I was writing when I was on Highway 1, hiking up to Mendocino. I could read what I was writing when I was on Telegraph Avenue in Berkeley, California. When I was, go to, I used to go to rock concerts. I saw Pink Floyd and Can Heat and I saw, you know, I was in, I would write when I was marching in the anti-war movement across the Golden Gate Bridge. I mean, across the uh, the Oakland Bay Bridge and things, all kinds of things. Uh, you know, when I was in college and high school and girlfriends and back when I was young, I was really into psychedelics and taking mushrooms and taking, smoking tons of col gold, Colombian gold and listening to the Rolling Stones and Tom Waits and Bob Dylan and and I write it all down you know went to, you know it was a period of time when I had my own apartment and back in those days when I was sick with my ulcer I sit up all night and I sit in my kitchen sick and I would write about whatever was on my brain all that I burned and it's all gone so all those out there who keep diaries keep journals notebooks don't burn them. Just storm away. Put them in a lock box. You'll regret it. So yeah, so that was my day. Uh, tomorrow is a Friday. I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow. Uh, today, I didn't really read anything today. <laughs> I got up this morning. Well, at first I couldn't sleep. Last night I woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning. I woke up, I couldn't get back to sleep. So I got up, I messed with the computer, I took some chill pills, went back to bed at 3.30, woke up at eight o'clock, and I got up, and at 9.30 here it says, I wrote in my diary, and then at 10 o'clock I left. And when I got home in the afternoon after hanging out with my friend Tim, doing stuff. I just drifted through the afternoon. I, I just, 
Well, I did look at the new books, I, the used books I got today. I looked at Consciousness Explained. I read some articles here, Enthusiasms of Rubbers, uh, Robinson Davies. I did look at some Psalms. One of my favorite Psalms is Psalm 63. And I, I, I read it in here today, well, this afternoon. I like Psalm 63, and I looked at it, and I thought I'd just read it. Psalm 63, O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsted for thee, my flesh longed for thee, in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. To see thy power and thy glory, so that so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary, because thy loving kindness is better than life, and my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches, because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul followeth hard after thee, and thy right hand upholdeth me. But those that seek my soul to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for foxes. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone that sweareth by him shall glory. But the mouth of them that speak lies shall be stopped. I always liked Psalm 63. Uh, when we would, when I was going to church, I went to churches that sang the psalms. We, we didn't, were psalm singing churches, and I always really liked singing Psalm 63. Oh God, Thou art my God, early will I seek Thee. My soul thirsteth for Thee. That's why I'm always praying. I say, I say to the Holy Spirit, God, the Holy Spirit, plant within me a thirst for God, and on unceasing thirst, an eternal thirst for God, for communion and fellowship with Him. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land, where no water is, to see thy power and thy glory. I just love Psalm 63. So I looked at that. I looked at Dreamland, True Tales of American Opiate Epidemic by Sam Quick, Quick and Own, Own, won't owns I can't pronounce that and I was looking at this book uh, by William Les heat moon here there elsewhere stories from the road I read the back here he had this little thing I read about called the classic American road trip my wife is always saying that when she retires we're gonna go on road trips I haven't been on road trips <laughs> since I was a young person so that's it. I got bookmarkers today. I got some folders. I got I got staples paper. I got pins. I got my Webster. You know, I got, I always have a dictionary. I cannot spell for the life of me. Uh, sometimes it'll take me 10, 15, 20 minutes to find a word to spell. But I have this always by me. And so yeah. So that's what's going on today in my book world. Tomorrow's a Friday. I don't know what's coming in the mail tomorrow. I'm not, I'm not expecting anything. Uh, I've gone through all the thrift stores, I think, this week. There's a couple I haven't visited, but I don't know. I'll see how I feel tomorrow. So I hope you had a good Friday. No, this is, this is Thursday. Hope you have a good tomorrow, a good weekend. Until next time, bye.